This video will explain the Retrieval Augmented Generation RAG model developed by researchers at Facebook and recently open sourced in the Hugging Face Transformers library. The idea of this model is to augment language models with context. So instead of just using the input sequence X to generate output text Y, you would also prepend retrieve document Z to the input sequence X. So the generated text Y is a product of the input of X as well as retrieve document Z. The generated text Y can be adapted to any downstream task like classification or semantic similarity as in the text input text output task setup for natural language processing. These prepended documents help language models dramatically with respect to generating factually correct text and performing knowledge intensive tasks such as fact verification or open domain question answering. The way the documents are retrieved is very interesting. The authors use Siamese BERT encoders of 100 word snippets from a Wikipedia corpus, as well as the input X sequence, treated as a query. This is new compared to traditional information retrieval that relies on heuristics like TF-IDF or BM25, sparse, uh, heuristically crafted feature vectors. It's also interesting to see the modularity of this algorithm. The authors use a pre-trained document index and query encoder integrated with a pre-trained BART generator. And you could also imagine swiping out the non-parametric external memory source, in this case, Wikipedia, with something like a knowledge graph, or maybe a hybrid structured and unstructured external knowledge source. This video will explain the components of this retrieval augmented generation algorithm a bit about the data sets it's tested on and some interesting characteristics of these models compared to closed book language models. This video will explain the paper Retrieval Augmented Generation for Knowledge Intensive Natural Language Processing Tasks. Language models refers to these deep neural networks that are trained to perform this task of predicting a masked out token. This can be done in an autoregressive way where you use all the context on the left to predict a masked out token on the right or just a masked token all the way at the end of the sequence to just generate text when you don't even have, uh, when you're not even predicting some ground truth labeled sequence. And then you slide that mask on to produce a new generated sequence. So you can also have these masks in the middle of the sequence, like in the BERT model, and then use the left and right context to predict these intermediate tokens. So the current generation of language models take in this input X and use it to generate some text. But the idea behind retrieval augmented generation and also papers like RAM or ORQA is that they're looking to add context to the language models to improve their performance on knowledge intensive or uh, factual kind of tasks. So the idea would be instead of just having the sequence X, you would also do information retrieval to fetch some document Z from some kind of database or some kind of, uh, in this case, a Wikipedia index. And then you append these documents to the input to facilitate generating text. So it's similar to this idea in GPT-3, where you have this in-context learning, except in the case of in-context learning, you're talking about uh, appending demonstrations of the task to the input sequence. Here you're just demonstrating, uh, uh, appending documents that provide information for the generation. So this current generation of language models that do not have context, for one, you can't easily expand or revise their memory. If you want to change a fact, like say uh, event X happened in 1982 compared to 1976, just training on this one example isn't going to permanently change this implicit knowledge stored in the parameters of the neural network without access to any kind of retrieval or context. Additionally, you can't provide insight into their predictions. It's really hard to decode what caused it to generate some text, and it might hallucinate and generate false factual knowledge as it does this mass, mass, mask generation. Here's a high level overview of how the RAG algorithm works when information retrieval meets language modeling. So we start off with the non-parametric external memory. Parametric memory would refer to knowledge that's implicitly stored in the weights of a neural network. This non-parametric knowledge refers to 100 word uh, samples from a Wikipedia corpus. So we have this uh, big set, 21 million, of these 100 word uh, snippets from this Wikipedia corpus, and we're gonna encode each of these 100 word sequences with a document encoder. And then when we ask a query, like we have this new X sequence with a mask at the end of it, we're gonna treat that like a query, encode that query, and then use this maximum inner product search that's implemented with this uh, face library 
to find the most similar documents that have been encoded in our non-parametric memory. So the way that the query is encoded and the document is encoded is through the use of this sentence BERT, uh, Siamese BERT, two tower model kind of architecture. The idea is that in s the BERT model might do semantic similarity, natural language inference, comparison of two different sequences by taking them both in as input and then having this cross attention on both of the sequences. Compared to these Siamese uh, architectures, they're used to taking in just a single sequence and producing a representation from the single sequence that's used to do comparison with either cosine similarity or passing them through a softmax and doing some kind of loss function that way. So the generator is going to take in these input documents and use it to append it to the context x to produce outputs y. Firstly, we'll describe how the dense passage retrieval is integrating neural information retrieval to fetch the context for the BART generation model. So as mentioned previously, we have this Siamese network two tower architecture to compute this, the representation of the documents where we have 100 words in each of these documents and there's 21 million of these 100 word sequences extracted from Wikipedia. So each of these documents goes through a separate encoder. The D of Z, the document encoder, and the query encoder are two separate 110 million parameter BERT base, uh, BERT base models that do not share the same parameters. The query encoder is going to be used to encode these queries. So anytime we have an X that we're using, say, uh, it's just a sequence with a mask at the end of it, we're going to encode that as a query and then use it to go find the most similar documents in the non-parametric encoded uh, these Wikipedia sequences. So a core idea to this is that we're not going to be training the document encoder. So this is in comparison with a paper titled Realm, where they do rebuild this document index and update the encoding of these 100 word sequences from Wikipedia. But the idea here where that's interesting is when you just encode them one time, you can build this document index that facilitates vector similarity search. So anytime you encode one of these vector, these queries, and then turn it into this dense vector, and then you want to look up the most similar vectors in this database of vector encodings, you can compute these centroids in the document that make it so you don't have to do the comparison with all the vectors in the database, in the Wikipedia uh, corpus, and you can just uh, speed up the search dramatically. It's also implemented with this face library that does this maximum inner product search, and it's accelerated in all these other ways that are in more detail than what's described here. Our description of dense passage retrieval describes how these Z documents are fetched from the Wikipedia corpus or these 100 word slices from the Wikipedia corpus. And now we'll look at how the BART model is going to generate tokens Y sub I given an input sequence X and previously generated tokens Y sub 1 to I minus 1. So there are two different ways they propose to decode from this set of latent documents. And they uh, call this marginalizing over the documents, referring to summing up over the different documents that are retrieved. Because when you do this similarity uh, between the documents and the query, the, there might be, say, five to 10 documents that are really similar with the query encoding. So you're going to feed each of these different Z sub I's, the top K most similar latent document Z, or the 100 word sequences, with the query encoding. So in the RAG token way of decoding from this, you're going to uh, take the product over each token. So at each uh, step of generating a token Y sub I, you're going to integrate this different latent document Z sub I, and then you're going to multiply it by the P sub eta. These are the parameters of that query. Uh, the, this is the, um, the matching between the document and the query that's going to have this prior probability on the likelihood of this Z sub I document in the top K to begin with. The PRAG sequence model is going to just take one latent document and generate an entire Y1 to N, or however long the sequence is going to be. And then you're going to do that for each of the Z's and then try to uh, multiply together the probabilities of those entire sequences. But they're later on going to describe more about how the beam search is used to actually decode from these models. So there is a little more behind the details of how they decode from the uh, RAG sequence and RAG token, but from a high level idea, the BART model is a sequence to sequence model. It's gonna encode the entire sequence. So in this case, it could be uh, the Z latent documents, the input X, and then Y one up to I minus one. It's gonna encode that entire concatenated sequence. And then it's gonna start decoding and reconstructing the sequence. And then at the end of it, it'll put the next Y sub I token. So the idea behind beam search this is an illustration of a greedy search, just showing the path that's traversed along the generation from this blog post is linked in the description of this video. 
So you see at each time step, it might set, it might take in the as y uh, sub i minus one, and then it can either predict as y sub i, dog, nice car, and then it puts a probability on each of these generations. So in this case, it put 50% probability on nice, 40% on dog, and then 10% on car. So in this case of the uh, PRAG token, PRAG sequence, we're weighting each of these probabilities by the parameters of theta, which are the parameters of the BART model, as well as the similarity that is determined the prior probability on that document that was retrieved. Because we have, say, five to 10 of these latent documents, and we're weighting the probability of the token that's generated by the probability of retrieving that latent document in the first place as we appended it to the context. So that's how you go about decoding this, and there's more details about how exactly they do this in the paper. So hopefully that was a decent overview of how the neural information retrieval model fetches latent document Z to be inputted with the X into this BART sequence to sequence model to generate a new sequence. So another really interesting detail about the implementation of this paper is the way that they take these off the shelf pre-trained models and integrate them into this framework and then train it further. So you start off with a pre-trained BART generator. So this BART model that's doing the uh, encoding and decoding has been pre-trained on language modeling and it's one of these open source models on something like Hugging Face. And they also have the pre-trained dense passage retrieval. And this is the training of the uh, document query encoding by fetching documents that contain answers to questions in natural questions and uh, web questions. And they also have the non-parametric external memory, the Wikipedia corpus. So you could imagine uh, taking out any one of these individual components and replacing it with something else to do the generation, to do the document encoding and the query encoding, or the non-parametric external memory source. You can imagine maybe swiping this out with something like a knowledge graph or some other kind of uh, memory source. These are some of the data sets that the authors test out the retrieval augmented generation model on. These uh, data sets are designed to be open domain question answering generally. Open domain means that you expect these tasks to have to kind of fetch some information in order to answer them. Compared to say a closed book question answering task, in closed book you mean that the neural network should be able to store all the knowledge it needs to perform the task in its own parameters. It shouldn't need to rely on some kind of external memory source. But these tasks are more designed to be a knowledge intensive tasks and these authors have another paper where they benchmark these different kinds. They produce this big list of different kinds of data sets that fall under this category of being knowledge intensive, things like uh, the fever fact verification uh, data set, or being able to generate a Jeopardy question given only the answer. So this natural questions data set, it's this open domain question answering where you have questions about say John Wilkes Booth, airplane mode, or the Royal Sign Manual, and you have to generate the answer. So a lot of these previous approaches would treat this as a classification problem. So in the squad extractive question answering task, you might take in this fetched uh, passage as input and the model would classify where the answer is. So the output would be say, indexes uh, 10 through 15 is where the answer is. Compared to these text input, text output models where it's gonna generate the answer. It's not just gonna classify the position in the input text. So it's gonna retrieve this context and it's gonna generate the answer, the text, the answer, rather than classifying where it is in the context span. So it's a similar idea in the trivia QA data set where you have these questions and you have to generate these answers and they're very knowledge intensive and require factual information to produce these kinds of answers. So they also look at this MS Marco data set. And this is a really interesting data set where uh, it has these queries that are issued to Bing. So the queries are written in this kind of natural language, the way that people type in searches into a search engine. And then you have the top 10 passages and then the best answer is human annotated. So this is a description of the annotation interface that's used to take the top 10 passages that are uh, returned from Bing from this query and then find the uh, best answer that is human annotated. So this is another knowledge intensive task to be able to just answer any kind of search engine query with this kind of Wikipedia corpus, non-parametric memory, the neural information retrieval system, and then this BART uh, text output generator compared to classifying the answer within one of these spans. So then we also have the uh, fever data set. And so these are 185,000 uh, claims that are generated from Wikipedia. So the way that they annotate this is they uh, sample some text from Wikipedia and then uh, the human annotator tries to uh, devise some kind of claim like Barbara Bush was a spouse of a United States president during his term. And that would be an example of a uh, claim that is supported in the document. And then another annotator would try to perturb this a little bit so that it's refuted by the evidence in the Wikipedia article. 
If you are interested further in these kinds of data sets, I recommend checking out this paper, uh, Kilt, a benchmark for knowledge intensive language tasks. These are the results comparing the RAG token and RAG sequence models, which are two different ways of incorporating the latent document Z into the BART generation, compared with the Realm approach that continually rebuilds the document index and their previous paper, Dense Passage Retrieval, which is extended in this paper, Retrieval Augmented Generation. They're also comparing it with this closed book T5 model with 11 billion parameters, as well as the variant of T5 that's trained with salient span masking. And salient span masking was discovered to be better for uh, training, pre-training these models that eventually perform these knowledge intensive tasks like natural questions, trivia QA, web questions, or curated Trek. So this is a really interesting test because uh, the RAG token RAG sequence, they have this BART model with about 400 million parameters compared to the T5 with 11 billion parameters. And they're both looking at completely different ways of accessing the knowledge in these neural networks. So the RAG model is going to go fetch this context and append it to the sequence. Whereas the T5 model is just going to store all of the knowledge in the parameters of the neural network. And it's using 11 billion parameters to do such a task. But we see a massive performance difference with the retrieval augmented generation compared to the 11 billion parameter T5 model. The authors also test out the retrieval augmented generation model on the task of producing Jeopardy questions given the subject answer. So provided a subject like Hemingway, it generates this Jeopardy question such that the answer would be uh, what is Hemingway, that kind of Jeopardy style. So here they're using human assessments to compare the difference between RAG and BART. So RAG is where we're fetching this context and appending it to the subject Hemingway. So it would be Hemingway. And then in front of this would be these fetch documents about Hemingway that facilitate generating this question. So it's showing this difference between BART or the RAG token decoding model. And the humans saying that the RAG token model is better than BART or BART is better than RAG token or both are good, both are bad, or they uh, can't tell or something like that. And they're assessing this along how factual the generated questions are, which is a huge deal in these knowledge intensive tasks where you don't want these natural language processing models that you're relying on for these tasks to producing uh, text that isn't factually correct. Earlier we described that RAG token and RAG sequence are two different ways of marginalizing across all of the different retrieved document Z to produce the output Y. So in this case, they're looking at how much each document, documents one through five, impacted a generated token. Say this is Y sub I and this uh, context to the left of it at any point, novel, and then this whole context to the left is Y one to I minus one. So they're showing the, uh, the darker blue uh, squares indicate that document two had a massive impact on generating sun, and this had a massive impact on generating a. Uh. So these are two different uh, I think book titles from that are written by this author. And you're seeing that having fetched these two different documents, you'd imagine this one, this document that's been fetched, contains information about a farewell to arms, and this contains information, document two, contains information about the sun also rises. So this is showing how the uh, probability is put on these different latent documents, Z sub I, to generate this Y sequence. So back to the topic of comparing BART with RAG, these are some different examples of this input from the MS Marco task or the Jeopardy question generation task and the differences in generation between BART and RAG. And in some cases, such as uh, Washington, we see where BART says that this state has the largest number of counties in the US, which isn't actually true, and even though it looks true. And then RAG actually has produced these true statements because of the way it's retrieving this context and using it to generate these questions. So these are some examples comparing BART with retrieval augmented generation. This figure is showing some ablation results of different factors of the algorithm. So the first is the number of retrieved documents and how that changes as you retrieve more documents. So say we fetch 50 different of these 100 word sequences from our 20 million uh, Wikipedia corpus, will that improve the performance with respect to the natural questions exact match score, which is where you have this supervised label of the answer and you're seeing the exact match between the generated answer and the ground truth answer. So this shows that the model doesn't continue to approve in the case of the RAG token model as you retrieve more documents, even though the RAG sequence models seems to continue to improve even if it saturates enormously after uh, say 20 retrieved documents. So in the middle is showing the impact of fine tuning this query encoder. So earlier we mentioned that they don't continue to update the document encoder with respect to how you encode each of these 21 million hundred word sequences, but you do continue to update the query encoder that's used to go and find the most similar document 
in that uh, document index. So this is showing a huge difference between having a fixed dense passage retrieval model compared to fine tuning the query encoder. And then particularly a huge difference between this BM25, which are these uh, sparse features similar to TF IDF that are used to describe these uh, documents and do that kind of information retrieval without neural models at all. Remembering that the DPR and the RAG query and document encoders are both these Siamese BERT architectures with 110 million parameters each. At the very end of the appendix, the authors describe this problem of retrieval collapse, where regardless of what the input X is, though the query encodes this X, it always will retrieve the same documents from that document index D of Z. So it sounds somewhat similar to GANs that produce the same image despite a different Z input vector, and you call that mode collapse. So they do cite that the generator learns to ignore the retrieved information once this starts happening and just generate it from the implicit knowledge that's stored in the parameters. Remembering that this BART model is a 400 million parameter pre-trained model and it does already have a lot of implicit knowledge in the weights of the neural network. But it's not really super clear from the appendix section and the overall the paper how problematic this retrieval collapse thing is and how much it really impacted their experiments. So here are some ideas that could make the retrieval augmented generation model even more powerful or just be interesting to explore. So in this paper, we're looking at this Wikipedia uh, slice as being the non-parametric memory source. But it might be also interesting to see how this structured information in the form of knowledge bases, where we have these triplets of uh, entity, relation, other entity, and how this might be useful as the non-parametric memory that's used to augment the context of these retrieval augmented generation models. So another interesting idea is how can we learn better representations for the document index? So the document index is pre-trained to fetch documents that contain the answer span to natural questions and trivia question answering. Maybe there are strategies such as contrastive learning or some kind of self-supervised uh, learning a, a task that could improve the representations that are learned by this document encoder and thus facilitate this and maybe alleviate that retrieval collapse problem, although I'm not sure exactly how much of a problem that is. So then another interesting thing is how will longer input sequence length impact this? So this survey, Efficient Transformers, looks at models like Reformer, Linformer, Performer, Longformer. Uh, there's also models like Transformer XL and Compressive Transformer that use memory in the form of like kind of a recurrent memory structure. But how will attending over a longer sequence play with this uh, having a longer context sequence from fetched neural information retrieval? So we've looked at how retrieving more documents helped but in that experiment of going from 10, 20, 30, 40 retrieved documents, you're still talking about marginalizing over them and uh, summing up over the probabilities compared to some kind of cross attention where the input is say uh, 5,000 words or some massive input sequence like that and you have that cross attention over the whole sequence compared to multiplying the probabilities out of these smaller sequences. So it could be interesting to see how this efficient transformers plays into architectures that integrate neural information retrieval with generation. For a deeper dive into this paper, I highly recommend watching this talk from Patrick Lewis about the paper that will be linked in the description of this video. Thanks for watching this overview of retrieval augmented generation. Hopefully this video made the high level algorithm clear how they use this document encoding and the query encoding and how they integrate that with the pre-trained BART model to have this context augmented generation of text and how they adapt this to these different tasks by generating this text input, text output kind of format, and how it can perform all these different knowledge intensive tasks. I'm really excited about this kind of model and it's been open source in the Hugging Face library. So if you do try it out, please let me know in the comments how your experience is with trying this model on your own problems. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to Henry AI Labs for more deep learning and AI videos.